says we all look alike. Are you kidding? Yeah. Holy cow. Six of us were in the service. That, we, I want you to say that too. I... Good morning. I'm Edward M. Conley. I served in the United States Navy. I'm a, proud to be a veteran. And I'll give you a little background on exactly who I am and where I come from and why I spent so much time in the Navy. I'm from a family of 13 children, commercial fishermen out of Block Island, Rhode Island, and we lived on the water all of our lives. And most of my brothers and sisters, uh, well, most of my brothers were in the service. I had two in the Second World War, one Army, one Navy. I had four in Korean War, three Navy, one Army. And I put in after boot camp in Newport in 1951, January, to go with my brother. And of course, everyone knows the story of the Sullivan brothers. They stopped all families being together. Well, I put in for it, and lo and behold, I got it. We were one of the first brothers back together. And as it turned out, I served on the USS Coney 508, which is a destroyer. It had 270, 280 men, something like that. And there were three sets of brothers. They put us all on one ship, which is fine. And the, a stranger coincidence is of the four, two, two of the sets of brothers were Conleys from Rhode Island yet. They did not know how to spell their name, they spelled it wrong, but that's okay. So if you're familiar with the service, you know they go to the loudspeaker and say, Conley, they up to the quarter deck. And of course, four heads stick out. Which one do you want? So anyway, that's a little aside, but it made life very interesting. I traveled all over the world, completely circumnavigated the whole globe with my brother. And if you could picture the joy that was, he was my one year older brother than I. What we, we just had a ball. We went out of Norfolk, down through the Panama Canal west, to San Diego, over to Hawaii, over to Japan, etc., etc. Served in Korea, did my, my duty there, and like they said, it's a Korean War was a police action, but they were rare bullets. They were shooting at us. You know. Not on, at me in particular, but at my ship, and we used to take the Korean Marines up the river for night sneak attacks or whatever they do. Whoever knows what Marines do anyway, but that's okay. And then we'd go back around uh, four in the morning and pick them up and run the river back down again. And all the time we were running the river across, they were shooting at us. If we gave the chance, that is. But anyway, but that's enough of that action. I enjoyed my life in the Navy very much. I think it's the greatest thing anyone could ever do. I, uh, just to mention quickly, I'll show you, this is the ship I lived for four years on. Three years, ten months, and seven days. And it, it had uh, a lot of good friends I met, and we, kept, we still keep in contact. And I went uh, across the equator down below India, Ceylon. Well, it used to be Ceylon, now it's Sri Lanka, I think. But anyway, right there. We went up inside the Arctic Circle, chasing submarines, and cold. January, again, cold, cold weather. Oh, God. How can anyone be? So that's why I made a rank to sort of get off of this guard duty and uh, standing watch out at the wings of the ship. And uh, that's about uh, what we need to know. And uh, unless you have something more, that's, uh, have any questions or anything. What was your most memorable uh, day while you were on active duty? My most memorable day would have been, well, it is memorable too. When I first arrived on the ship, and my brother's name is Skell, it was his nickname. But I won't go into why that's that. But anyway, I came, I was coming down the gangway, and they must have said, look for the skinniest kid you can, because believe it or not, I used to be, I just made the weight to go in the service. Anyway, I'm going down the gangway with my sack over my back, and I got stopped by these three guys. He says, are you Conley? I said, yeah. You're Bones? I said, I'm Bones. 
He said, have you seen your brother? I said, no, why? Well, you know, what's wrong? And he said, oh, no, nothing. Oh, it's okay. How big was that turtle you guys caught on Block Island? And I said, I know what my brother's been doing, telling stories. That's what you do in the winter in commercial fishing places. So I said, well, I don't know what Skell told you, but we used the shell of this turtle for the roof of a gas station. They said, oh my God, we got another one, which is fun. And when I went across the equator, they give you a summons, you know, and mine was, I'll try to be polite for the sake of this, but my summons was the only man we know that can put a ton of manure in a half-ton truck. <laughs> and you, you had to do battle, of course, and it was, it was fun. But that's, that's about it. Let's, we need to say much more. I no point in getting into my family too much. It's a big, huge, loving family, and we still are. Out of 13, I've only lost two, so that's not too bad at all. So you have reunions every year? The, the ship has reunions. I haven't made one. My brother, who's down in Florida, and that's where most of the reunions happen to end up, he goes, and I have the newsletter uh, from the Coney, Coney newsletter, and, but I haven't been able to get free to go. I mean, it's just timing just didn't work out properly. I would have. I keep in contact with uh, several of my buddies. We write. In fact, I just received, strangely enough, a card from uh, one of my best buddies' wife who says, they just, just to let you know we've got a new address. They're from Michigan somewhere. Never seen him since. Every Christmas we correspond and send cards and write little notes of what's going on. So it's nice. Now what was your job on a board ship? Okay, uh, my rank ended up being FT3, third class, petty officer. And uh, that was fire control. We not fire fires, but fire ammunition, uh, armament. Our job was to direct the guns in the proper direction give the depth and all of that. And we had about four, I think 14 people from the chief down to me, low man on the totem pole then, but then I became second up after a while. But that was good. And our job was to maintain the radar, firing radars, to make sure they were always running. As long as they ran properly, we had open gangway. There's another great advantage to their rank, that rate as long as one person was always aboard who could handle it if they needed to. You can't, I can't imagine Norfolk needing to run your armament radars, but they had to keep a man aboard. Now, did you have to fire while you were in Korea? Did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh sure. We did a run, run in the river. We, we used to, we, anything that moved. There was, because it was all enemy territory, so anything that moved was the enemy to us. I, I didn't know, and I'm just doing what they tell me to do, but they, yeah, oh yeah. We had two five-inch and twin, we had twin 40s, and we also had twin three-inch, and plus hundreds of 20 millimeters, they're all over the place, you know. No, oh yes, we, uh, we were, we received uh, our Korean citation as two battle stars. So we, we are to my guess, we, we didn't get shot up, but those guys, the Korean Marines, got shot up very badly. And we'd bring them back aboard and then take them to the nearest uh, ship, health ship, uh, the Good Hope, whatever they call them, that's what they call them most of them. Hospital right? ships. Yeah, hospital ships, yeah. yeah. Did anyone on the ship get hurt or wounded? I, my memory doesn't serve me that well, but I would say no. We, we did go ashore a few times to extract someone, but we, we were lucky, I guess. We never, nobody bothered us then. We just went and came back. Not me particularly, but we meaning us. Whoever does it on your ship is we. What would you consider your scariest day? Probably boot camp. <laughs> no, I, 
That, well, I would say that, running the river. Sure. I mean, that, like I say, they're real shells are shooting at you, you know. That gets your attention, but you're so busy doing your job, you don't really dwell on it. It wasn't like a guy was standing in front of you with a rifle going to shoot you. I mean, I can picture that being very scary, but not me. How wide a river are we talking about? Couple of, a couple of three miles, maybe. Yeah, maybe it was pretty wide. Definitely one. It, well, it's hard to say because, yeah, and it wind, meandered, right? If you know anything about jungle rivers and things, they meander, they go up and down, they have oxbows in them and everything gets. But we, we tried to stick to the wide, drop them as straight as possible, obviously, so you can zip back out. And we came back out full speed. We went in full speed and came back out full speed, whatever that is. I don't know that may be classified, and I don't know anyway. So it was fast. A destroyer does move. So. How fast do they go? Oh, I, oh, what are they, 30 knots maybe? I can't. Not as a mile on an eighth. But I would say, 30, I really can't say, but if I had to guess, that's what I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else you'd like to add? No, other than I think this is a very nice opportunity for people to get together and uh, talk about their experiences. I know when they invite me to the school, they, the kids love it, and these, my grandson actually, he's doing it. You'll do that, won't you, Poppy? I said, well, of course. How do you say no? You don't. In Troy. So I went for a good three quarters of an hour or so and just talked to him, showed him maps and things because I carry a map of the world and where I completely went around it and it's very interesting to a lot of people. And uh, But that's about it. I enjoy it very much and I'm glad they're doing this and it's nice to be part of the history because we had a USO uh, show here at the center and it was simply amazing in many cases, those fellows there, and girls, there's a lot of women veterans around that people don't realize how many, we have a lot of them in our Veterans Association here. But uh, the USO, there were people there that spoke for the first time in 50 years. Tears run right down their cheek. And that's true veterans. That's what a veteran is all about. You want to do somebody a favor someday, you see somebody lonely, you'll probably find out he's a veteran. Go talk to him. That's, yeah. And that's about, that's about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. And Chang, certainly thank McNulty or whatever. Whoever. He's the one I think that got this together. Mark Butler.